Hi everyone. Um, the lighting situation isn't great today. It's a very grim day. The clouds are all drawn in. Um, but just to let you know, I think I'm going to invest uh, on a like a studio light because at the moment I can't really uh, make that many videos. The days are obviously uh, a lot shorter, so. I think I just will get a, a studio light, a professional one, that will help me to have a consistent uh, light situation. So, um, now, what I want to do today is talk a little bit more about this camera I feel like I'm going through a real obsession here because this isn't something that I've seen very often. And in fact, I don't know if they just came out, whether they're like brand new and that might be the reason, or whether just not a lot of people kind of think of these um, paints. So I have done a review and before I have mentioned that they are made in China but they are Japanese brand from what I understand. So it says here Kamarabi is a simple word in Japanese which describes the subtle beauty of sunlight shining through the leaves of the trees and the dance the rays make. So it's quite a romantic way of describing it. And then our watercolor paint set has been created with artists in mind, focusing on high level of pigmentation and soft texture to our paints, which is exactly why I love these paints. Okay, so when I have done a review on these and I used the Cardi papers, I kind of wasn't happy the way they looked because I felt that although the fine tech did even worse, this is by the way a glazed one, so I had to go twice over it. Um, I felt that they have done so much better than fine tech. However, I felt that this paper wasn't um, making them justice. So basically, today I want to try it on a few other papers uh, and then let you know what my thoughts are. So it's just going to be a very simple kind of um, swatching and then in this little sketchbook which I keep predominantly for kind of swatches and a little experimentation, um, this is the Stillman and Burn Beta series, um, I will do a little illustration on this side hopefully this paper will do better. So I will start off first with swatching um, on the aquarel block, the watercolor paper, which is the 300 GSM. It's a cheap paper that you can get in the shop called Tiger. I love this paper generally for my other watercolors. They look fantastic. Super bright, super gorgeous. However, I want to see how these Camarabi uh, metallic paints behave on this paper. So that's what I'm going to do here. As you can see, the texture is lovely. So I'm expecting the watercolor to sit in the little wells of the paper. And then once I've done swatching these ones, I will carry on swatching them around here, which you will see. And then we will do the illustration, I guess, in real time. So I will begin by just simply spraying the pens. So for that, I have this little spray bottle here. So these don't need that much water, but I kind of like to go in twice. And just let, you can see already now, without me even needing to go in with the brush, the pigment is already um, moving about. So it's quite gorgeous looking. Okay, so let's start with the swatching. Never up, never down, never Like a theme in a song, clever Feeling high, feeling low at the same time Feel so right, then I'm wrong, hoping I'll be fine But I get up, I always do I never think, I always do Never thought I would Get up again. 
Okay, so I am super happy with the result because it is what I um, expected. So first of all, I want to show you the dried version. So let's have a look at this one. So this was on the Tiger Aquarelle block watercolor paper. So they're just like liquid metal, liquid gold. And when I was doing the swatches, what it reminds me of, or particularly when they're like this um, in the pan when they're still wet and you're trying to get your brush into it, they remind me of nail polish, like nail varnish, you know. Um, they're just so gorgeous and very smooth and very opaque and just gorgeous. These are stunning. And let's have a look now at the cardi paper and you will see what I meant. You see they don't come through as strong. There you go. So it was definitely the paper as you can see. And I didn't do any glazing on the uh, the swatches that I've done today, so it's just one go, as you could see, and looks a lot better. So, and then I'll show you like that as well, hopefully. There we go. You can see this one, the copper looks so different. On the cardi paper, it looks very faint, very um, light. And then look at these two as well, the bronze and the yellow gold. All of them look a lot stronger. And then I'll try to show you these two as well, like that. Okay, so um, the other thing I wanted to actually share with you is um, something related to this. So... I have seen um, a lot of people in the scrapbooking community use the Heidi Swap Color Shine Spray bottle in the gold. You know that kind of gold that looks like this, this classic type of gold, which is uh, yellow gold um, in this palette. And um, I just cannot get hold of that um, spray in UK. And it's just so annoying. So basically what people do is they uh, unscrew the um, top and then they just kind of tap the paint of these um, onto their projects. And so this is why I wanted it because it just looked like liquid gold. Now I feel that I have discovered that in this Kamarabi um, paints because I've done this little scrapbooking project there is a video I've made but basically I have sprinkled that paint done a little a little bit of splashing right here and it looks so gorgeous and the other thing is it doesn't come off so there's like no sparkles even if I go with my nail it's hard and it's just gorgeous and so if you are in a situation where you can't get the Heidi Swap color shine gold uh, spray then try this one it's so easy um, to use and I absolutely love it this other project that I think um, I've shown you already is where I put the different colors, four of the colors from this palette and they look gorgeous and I love these two parts as well. Uh, where is it? No, here on the hair actually where it's a little shimmery just because I used the um, kind of residue water like that right here and you can paint with that as well just mix it up a little bit and you will create a little sheen all right so today the final thing that i want to do is i want to do some doodling and then i want to basically use the paints so i'm going to go ahead and use my platinum carboning fountain pen because I don't want the ink to be, this is waterproof ink in here, and I don't want the ink to be moving and making the metallic paints distort the color basically and make them look dark.
Okay, so now let's um, color these in and the paints, some of them have dried up a little bit already. So I'm just going to try re -wet them. I don't think I will use silver simply because it's not the color that I like and it will not show up much on the white paper anyway. So I'm just going to try and not go over the ink line because it's so opaque it would cover it up. So I would just kind of leave the highlight like so and let it dry. So let's see what it looks like when it's dried because you can see it's quite a bit of a blob of paint there so it should be quite saturated once it dries. And then I'm also going to put this little same color down below here. A bit much. So you can see I went over the black line and it sort of pretty much covered it. So this one was the copper. Now let's move on to the rose gold. And I'll do it right next to the copper. Like that. And then I'm going to do bronze. It's just so gorgeously pigmented. Uh, let me do the bronze, this one. And then the next one, I'm going to do the yellow gold. Like that. And finally, the light gold. The light gold is a little interesting. It sort of separates into kind of like looks almost like oil paint when it sits in the pan so it has I think some silver mica uh, pigment in there with a little bit of yellow dye and when you obviously load it on the brush it's fine but when it sits a little bit in the pan it separates but it's a gorgeous color nonetheless okay so I'll leave it at that and maybe I'll do some splashes. Hmm. Okay, I'll do the splashes. I'll show you how I do the splashes. So for the splashes, I add a bit more water. Oh, you can't see it here. Let me just zoom out a little. So I'm adding a bit more water, so it's quite um, thickly loaded on the brush. And now I'm just going to put these like that and that is my splashing done quite thick blobs because um, the paint is very thickly mixed up right now so let me just show you the gorgeousness again this is isn't it just mesmerizing I could watch this forever it's like hypnotizing <laughs> if you look right in the middle Ooh, beautiful. Okay, so now let's see what I what I said to you about this one before. So it's a lot of uh, paint there, but once it dries, it should flattened out. That's what happened on the this um, scrapbooking project that I just showed you. So let me just dry these quickly and come back. Okay, so they're nice and dry now and they look gorgeous. So you can see how the light is reflecting on the illustration and every color looks beautiful. 
And here are these uh, little blobs as well. So they're kind of raised, so if you go with your finger over it, you will feel that they are a little bit raised. But it actually gives it extra texture to the painting and it looks really beautiful. So I hope I could now demonstrate um, why I am so much in love with these paints right now. So yeah, thanks for watching and see you soon.